everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart, deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly appreciate it. Now, if it's not already gone, all gone, because this is Friday show, this might already be all gone. I am giving away free copies, free paper copies, that's right, folks, of my book, Nine Rules for the Future, that I wrote with ChatGPT. To the first 10 folks who send me an email at thinkfuture at gmail.com, U.S. addresses only, I'll send you a paper copy, paper copy <laughs> of my book, because I ordered way too many, and I need to give them away. So just send me your email address, email address, send me your <laughs> address at um, thinkfuture.gmail.com, and I will po postal mail you a copy. And U.S. only, please, but if you're out of the, outside of the U.S., hey, make your case. I might be able to get one for you. So I heard the other day, and I think to myself, you know, when I hear about these things, I think to myself, who, what was the original justification for this concept? Like, who came up with this idea? And I'm trying to figure out it was be if it's because somebody said, well, people are really dumb, and they're habitual, and because they've always done this with humans, they might do this with machines too. They might do this with robots too. Because people just follow habits, right? They follow habits. When you go to Starbucks and you buy a coffee, you typically tip the barista, right? You go in, little screen comes up. How much do you want to tip? Boop. You do that, right? Or you throw a few bucks in, or you throw a buck in, or whatever. We are so used to, in the United States, it's not the same in every country, but in the United States, we are so used to tipping service personnel. Apparently, some, I don't know if I'd call them intelligent, some, uh, what would I call him or her? I'd call it um, enterprising, let's say that. Some enterprising individual thought it might be a good idea to put a tip section on a automated checkout. So there's no human involved. It is a self-check and it's a tip for the machine. A tip for the robot. So as you're going through whether you, I don't know where you are, but let's say you're, uh, I don't know, getting yourself a soda at some place where you, you, you buy your, you, you know, you just pick up the cup, you get yourself a soda, and you're on your way out, you scan the soda, and it says, would you like to add a tip? Would you, would anybody, would any human being with any kind of intelligence or thought actually put a tip on something that they've done themselves fully i mean completely end to end who are you tipping are you tipping the programmer who designed the software are you tipping the personnel who are cleaning up after you are you tipping the company that made the machine who are you tipping now some people might say well of course you're tipping the personnel you know just because you're getting your own drink doesn't necessarily mean there's not other people who are doing stuff. Yeah, but it's their job. There's no connection between your tip, or sorry, your purchase, and what these people are doing. They're doing whatever job they're doing for the wage that they're getting paid. And they should be getting paid a fair wage. And if they're not getting paid a fair wage, they should go somewhere else where they can get paid a fair wage. But whose idea was it to put a tipping function on a completely automated process where you're doing your own self-checking. Because if you ask me, there is no one to tip. And in fact, I might even argue that in some situations, the amount of effort, because this is what happens all the time. I mean, you've seen, there, there's so much automation going on behind the counter that these individuals who are serving you do so little work. Because it used to be, I mean, if you think about it, okay, think about Starbucks for a second. 
coffee shop. If you go get a regular black coffee, basically what they do is they pick up a cup, they put it under spigot, they pull the spigot, make sure the spigot doesn't overfill, the cup doesn't overfill, they turn the spigot back, turn around, put the cup on the counter, or put a lid on the cup, put the cup on the counter, and hand it to you. Literally takes, what, five seconds? 10 seconds and for that they expect a 15 20 percent tip on top of the four dollars that you're paying for this cup of coffee should you be tipping i'm not going to talk about tipping specifically because that is your choice if you want to tip tip if you don't want to tip don't tip but if we're talking about the value that someone gets out of and first of all you should not have to and tipping should not be contingent or 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 the amount of money that people get paid should not be reduced by the amount of tips that they're expected to get during the day. I think that's one of the reasons why you end up getting poor service in some cases is because people are tipping more than the service that they're expecting. So they're seeing a disparity between what they're tipping and what they're getting. And of course nowadays all those machines are completely automated. They're with the older cappuccino machines, there was a lot of work involved in working the machines and doing it right. And now it's just stick it underneath, press a button. It's almost like getting an espresso. Should you be tipping somebody who's getting you an espresso? And should Starbucks be char paying these baristas less because they expect mon people to make money in tips? But I question. That's not what I'm questioning. I'm questioning tipping machines. Should we have the ability or give, <laughs> put tipping on self-checkouts? And if somebody puts a tipping on self-checkouts, maybe somebody should cut, should cut, think of this. So what would a tip of a, a self-checkout actually be useful for? I can understand, like I said before, you know, cleaning personnel, people are not directly connected to the sale. What other creative ways could you do something do a, something with the money generated from something like a tip? Well, maybe you get a optional discount. So let's say you're at the self-check, you check yourself out. Instead of a tip coming up, it says, hey, tip yourself. Do you want to tip yourself? Because you just saved us from having to have a cashier here. From saving, have some, we, we, because you did it yourself, you actually saved us money. So here, would you like to tip yourself 10%, 5%, a buck? How many people would, would be surprised by seeing that and go and almost elated and delighted and go, yeah, that sounds great. I'll tip myself a buck, bam. Or even if it's not a tip for themselves, maybe it's something that doesn't go right back to them. Maybe you can open up an automatic, automatic savings account for them. Hey, we're accumulating your tips. You're a target. You press a button, it comes up and says, hey, we've just opened up a tip account for you. Would you like to tip yourself a buck? And what do you mean tip yourself a buck? Well, tip yourself a buck means it'll go into a special target account where we take, where we collect your tips and we put them in a special high value savings account, which makes, I don't know, 6% a, for 6% a year. I mean, WhatsApp did something like that. What's to say that other, these other companies can't do it? Why can't we do that? You see, there are so many ways in which to improve the customer experience with that concept. But what are we doing? We're just using it to take more money out of people's pockets. Do you really think that's a good customer experience? Do you really think customers are going to line up to tip no one? Or tip a machine? Or maybe if we are tipping a machine, where's the money going? Is it going for server time? Is it going to help oil the gears? Why would you want to tip a machine? And if you do want to tip a machine, what can you do creatively with that money that will make the customer feel better about tipping a machine? That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.